Hello, my name is Louise and welcome to the Adventures with Yarn podcast. This is my podcast um, meant for entertainment purposes only at this time um, in which I talk about my crafting obsession slash passion, um, knitting, crochet, sometimes a little stitching and whatnot. So if you are a new viewer, welcome. Thank you so much for checking me out. And if you are an existing subscriber, thank you so much for returning and welcome back. So, speaking of welcome back, I am back to the real world. I am back from vacation. Um, it was a very lovely Christmas vacation. Now I am back, back to work. We flew in from Arkansas several nights ago and um, we pushed it. I, we pushed vacation as long as, you know, as long as we could. We basically had vacation, flew in the night before I was to go back to work. So um, I just turned right around, went to work, 12 hour shifts, three days in a row, and I am exhausted now. I'm very tired. Hence probably why um, my hair is how it is today. Um, I like to call this my Hermione hairdo. Uh, my hair just kind of just do its own thing, just be a big frizz ball. Um, I can tell you exactly why it's especially frizzy today though, because I woke up on my first day off, um, back from work and, um, I was excited to do my knitting and then, uh, as I got ready and settled and I was like, actually I'm sleepy, I'm going back to bed. <laughs> so this is just kind of the result, but we just kind of roll with it. Whatevs. Anyways. So, I almost have a finished object to show you. And it is in my little project bag that I've been using. It is my Petty Harbor socks. We have a finished Petty Harbor sock. And we have an almost finished Petty Harbor sock. So close. I was so close. I really tried to finish this while I was on vacation, but I ran out of my contrasting color yarn. It was so sad. So sad. Um, I can't wait to wear these two. I really want to wear my first pair of knitted socks for myself. Um, basically, the contrasting yarn that I had was um, from Madeline Tosh. I got it on the Black Friday sale on their website. It was one of the little unicorn tails, so it was just a mini skein. I thought that I would have enough for the heel flaps and the toes of both socks, but I guess I was mistaken. Um, it probably has something to do with the fact that I opted to knit um, the large size of these socks. Um, and I don't know. I, I, um, my, I know that I mentioned this before that my New Year's resolution was going to not be buying any more yarn, but this toe, the toe, it did. How could I finish this sock with the toe like that? So, so that to say, let me just tell you hello, my name is Louise, and I'm a yarnaholic. I'm addicted to yarn and I'm addicted to buying yarn. Yes, so I went ahead and bought some more of this Nassau blue color. Um, they didn't have any more unicorn tail mini skeins of this color, so <laughs> twist my arm. I bought a full skein of Nassau blue. I don't think it's shipped yet. They take, um, I think it takes like 10 to 14 business days um, for Madeline Tosh to then like ship their yarn. So. It's not here yet, I'll have to wait till it gets here, but uh, I mean, you know, no one's perfect. I will try super, super hard to be using up my stash this year for sure, but I've already blown it as far as not buying any yarn, like perfectly not buying any yarn for the whole year, but whatever. Let me tell you what, my stash though is so plentiful. 
I came home from vacations putting away the yarn I got for Christmas and the yarn I got from gift certificates for Christmas, putting all this stuff away and just kind of like basking in the glow of my stash. I'm just like, oh my gosh. And it almost started getting overwhelming the idea of how many projects I kind of have lined up to do with all of the stash that I have. Um, we'll just take it though, one project or two or three at a time. And um, what I did find funny was I was putting stuff away and I, I mean, it's, it's so much yarn, it's so much yarn, but there were two particular skeins that I was like, wait, where are those? And I couldn't find them. And I felt, it felt like that parable about like the, the lost sheep, like there's already a whole herd or flock of sheep and one goes missing and the shepherd, you know, goes to find that one sheep. And I thought, here I am with all this yarn and I'm going to not stop until I'm sure of the location of these two skeins of yarn that I know were here somewhere. Uh, I found them. They were just in an area of the stash that they wouldn't normally be because I, I like to organize my stash by color and then luxury yarn it has its own separate little corner. So the luxury yarn was hanging out with like the white and the creams and was hiding over there. But um, I found it. So it was good. Anyways, I started another project. So I saved this project for um, the plane ride back from um, Arkansas to Oregon and I thought that I would be able to finish it because one of the flights was like five hours long so I thought I'd be able to finish it but didn't quite make it so what I have here is my progress on the Rafa's hat by Hohi Locatelli and I made this, or am making this, with um, some yarn that I got from my Hobby Lobby haul, um, which I showed on my last podcast. This yarn was really soft. It is 100% acrylic, but it's really soft. Um, you can see it's kind of a variegated yarn. Um, and I thought this would be really nice to make, um, to give to somebody who has undergone chemotherapy. Um, in particular, um, a specific person that I have in mind um, who is of the male persuasion. So I thought that this might look kind of like masculine but still be like soft. It does kind of have like this floof halo going on from, um, from the yarn itself. I thought that I could whip this up. I really thought I could whip this up because I had two flights. One was an hour and a half and the other was like five hours. Um, but I did not take into account that this yarn is almost like a roving yarn. And on these needles, which are um, US size five, so kind of small, it's it was just been a little bit of a hassle the hat itself is fairly simple it's this ribbed hat basically um you cast on and rib for it's just a knit purl rib i think it's like for 16 rows and then you do a row of knit and a row of purl to get this kind of um texture and then repeat that three times until you work on the crown so I thought that I'd be able to just whip it up, but um, I think working with the texture of this yarn was a little more difficult than I had originally imagined it to be. So it took a little while, but that's okay. Still keep working on it. What was really cool was that um, on the second flight, we get all settled and I take my knitting out and get ready to knit. And I look over right across the aisle, the lady on the other side has her knitting out. And I thought, oh my gosh, what are the chances? And so I kind of just like tapped her and we're just kind of like, cheers. <laughs> and we got to talking, talking about what we were working on and the yarn and the patterns and that kind of stuff. That was pretty cool. So, and here I have my little stitch marker. 
Um, I may have a hard time seeing it, but it is this itty bitty little hedgehog. It's a hedgehog knitting a scarf. And this is from the Clever Clove. Um, she makes really cute little things. Anyways, all right, so that is what I have to show for this week. I wish there was more. Um, I mean, I wish, in general, I wish I could just spend more time knitting. I wish I didn't have to, you know, actually have a job to support myself and whatever. Anyways, um, all right, so a few more things to show you are... Let's see, what to do first. Um, I wanted to show some things that I received for Christmas. But first, let's, let's do this first. First, I wanna show you something that I have recently bought in the mail. I got this in the mail yesterday. Um, I, so I just showed you the stitch marker from the Clever Clove. I'm kind of obsessed now with stitch markers from the Clever Clove and stitch markers from Pitter Patter Polymer. Um, Pitter Patter Polymer makes super cute stuff. I've shown you my pumpkin pie stitch marker. Um, and you can call stitch markers slash progress keepers. Um, I have my grilled cheese one. She makes, I guess it's the food stuff that I just find so cute and it looks like really realistic. Um, I have, so like I said, I have the grilled cheese. And I also have like this little piece of birthday cake that I don't think I've actually shown. Um, but I got something here and I wanted to open this with you guys. So it comes in this adorable little package. And we'll open it right up. Oh, I don't remember buying two. <laughs> Um, I could have sworn I only bought one stitch marker and there's two in here. What a surprise. Um, oh my gosh. Anyways, um, so this, how cute, how super, super cute. Look at this. This is, um, a cosmic brownie. I don't know if you guys know what I'm talking about. Um, these brownies that you can buy and eat. They're super, super good. And so she has this itty bitty little one here um, with a little bite taken out of it. Oh my gosh. So cute. So stinking cute. Adorable. I just love it. And um, a cookie. Look at this. Um, I am I am I going crazy? Like I I really I'm 95% sure I did not order this one too, so I don't know if I got like a bonus. Um, but here's this little chocolate chip cookie, which is adorable. Huh, I don't know. So cute though, so cute. And then of course she has her little note. Many thanks, Louise. Little kitty cat, really cute. Anyways, wow. Well, that was a surprise. How about that? Huh. Um, yeah, I'll have to double check and see um, if I if I ordered both. I didn't think that I had, but hmm, I don't know. Okay, so how cool was that? So next I was going to show you some other things that I got for Christmas. Um, I had mentioned that my sister gave me some um, pattern books and I wanted a chance to show you that. So she gave me three pattern books. One of them is this Edwards Menagerie of a bunch of stuffed animals you can make out of crochet um, or amigurumi. Some people like to call it. I really do like amigurumi, which is the style of crochet that you're making things in the round and uh, does usually take construction. You, uh, you're making these stuffed animals um, in pieces, crocheted in pieces in the round, sewing them together, stuffing to make um, really adorable little stuffed animals. Um, let's just show you some of these here. Here's like one here. Oh, little raccoon. So there is like all kinds all kinds of little stuffed animals in here. Um, I think my sister 
that gave me this um, was kind of giving me this with the intentions of me being able to make these things for our baby niece. Um, so, which I will gladly do. So there's that. Um, come to think of it, all three of these pattern books she gave me are um, for amigurumi stuff. This next one's really cool. Crocheted Sea Creatures um, by Vanessa Munchi. Um, so this is really cute too. Look at some of these things. Um, I'm really excited to make these things out of like my stash yarn, especially um, using up like my stash acrylics, which are usually pretty good for these types of things. Look at these. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Yeah, so that is going to be super fun. I think this will be a super fun way to use up my stash doing those. And then lastly, so that was the Crocheted Sea Creatures by Vanessa Munchi. The Edwards Menagerie, Menagerie, Menagerie? Edwards Menagerie is by Carrie Lord. Um, I was reading the foreword in here and it was very sweet, kind of about how she was making these for her little baby. And, um, and I think how she started, she started learning to crochet, I think, when she was pregnant. And then um, as the baby was um, born and growing up, she started making all these different kinds of animals. This next one is Edward's Crochet Doll Emporium, also by Carrie Lord. Same gal. Um, this has all kinds of of little people you can make and it kind of has like these different you can kind of like mix and match how you want to make the dolls I mean just like all kinds of different things you can choose your head choose the body um, there's different outfits super fun super fun stuff um, my sister thought it would be particularly funny to, um, like make the members of my family and then like give them, uh, a doll made in their image. And I thought like, wouldn't that be just like a little bit creepy <laughs> to get like a doll of yourself? Um, I don't know. She didn't seem to think it would be too creepy. She thought it'd be fun. But also, you know, you can make the dolls, um, make their bodies and you can make the clothes that come like on and off of them. So all kinds of mix and match options. So that's a lot of fun too. And another great way to use up my stash. So thank you, Grace, my sister that gave me those books. And for clarification, this is not the sister that is the mother of our niece, baby Liviana. I do have three sisters. Um, but my sister Grace and I share a niece that is baby Liviana. So I think um, that will kind of be a combination um, gift present from us. That she's given me the books to make the stuff. I'll make the stuff. And, and together we will be giving baby Liviana lots of toys. Anyways, all right. Some more gifts. Um, I have received some gifts from my mom who also crafts. She, uh, when I was growing up, she did a lot of cross stitching. She made these really big, um, oh, I wish I could think of the brand name. I think it might be memorabilia. Um, she made these great big cross stitched angels and she made one for like each of me and my sisters. There's four of us. Um, she would enter them into the fair. Um, and now we each have like our own framed cross stitch of like an angel. Um, really, really beautiful stuff. Uh, she taught me to cross stitch when I was young and I cross stitched through middle school, through high school, um, into my early adult years. I, um, you may have seen my previous podcast episode five in which I cross stitched, um, a project for my baby niece, Oliviana. Um, and my sister surprised me and put that cross stitch in the fair. 
Fresno County Fair. Um, but, um, she, so she's done a lot of cross stitch. She also started knitting and crocheting about the same time that I did. Um, although neither of us taught the other, we actually both became like self-taught and then kind of met back up and was like, oh my gosh. Um, but now she does a lot of quilting, lots and lots of quilting, but she, um, she actually like ended up giving me the remainder of her stash of yarn. So I have like a lot of yarn from her. Um, because of that, she's de kind of dedicated herself to quilting. Um, you can find her on Instagram at Kim's Quilting Studio. And she actually is um, starting a business. She has a huge machine. I think it's called a long arm quilting machine. Um, and she actually does some stitches with that on other people's quilts um as a as a business service like for hire like people will send her their quilts and um pay her to use her machine to um stitch these intricate patterns onto um the quilts that have been made but she put down her quilting long enough to knit some presents and i wanted to show you this scarf that she made for my husband joshua so I asked her about the yarn and about the pattern. Um, she could not remember specifically the type of yarn that she bought, but she does know that she bought it from her local yarn shop in Fresno, which is called Swatches. Um, and I do believe I have a photo of my mom and I outside of Swatches. Uh, we like to joke that um, the sign kind of makes it look like it says snatches instead of swatches. So one of my sisters um, lovingly refers to that shop as snatches. Um, but I'll tell you what, I'll just snatch up all that yarn in that yarn shop or any yarn shop. Um, so she got the yarn there and she said that she also got the pattern there. She, um, she said that it was called um, the Silk Blend Zigzag Scarf. And I asked, uh, but, but that did not correspond with the yarn. So she did not buy a Silk Blend yarn. Um, but that was the pattern that she, she physically bought from the store and had them printed out for her. So she was using a printed out paper. Um, she gave me the same scarf, obviously in a much different colorway. How fun is this? I love it. I love pinks and purples. And this is a lot of pinks and purples. Um, I was asking my mom about the pattern. I mean, the really the only thing she could really quite remember was the name of it. And she told me, she's like, yeah, um, there, there was a lot of, a lot of yo's in that pattern. I said, yo's? What? Yo's? What do you mean yo's? She's like, yeah, yo's. Why? Oh, you know, yarn overs. Yo's. I was like, oh, okay. Yarn overs. Yeah. She's like, oh, you don't call those yo's? <laughs> oh, sorry. Um... <laughs> <laughs> to each their own but um yeah so I have this nice little scarf I mean she lives in Fresno California they don't need great big scarves just a nice little scarf um but here in Oregon it'll keep me warm too so that is that I did want to show you some other things that my mom made and gave to my husband and I and this is um, a lot of her quilting stuff. It's really pretty. So she made this Christmas table runner. And if you can see this, really, really pretty. Really pretty. It's whites, reds, blacks. Um, if you can see the stitching, I wonder if I can show this off, if the camera can see. You can kind of see on this area here. But um, this is what her long arm machine does. It puts the stitching all over the fabric. And because of the type of machine she has, she can program all kinds of really pretty patterns. So like this has this poinsettia type 
of texture over the top of the um, of the fabric and I, I, I know it's hard to see on camera over here but just believe me it's there so we have this really pretty table runner we have she gave us several things this year we have this um, I'm not sure what you call this like a sampler or something it's kind of just like this great big square that you can like hang on the wall again Christmas colors let me just put this out there <laughs> I have no idea what you guys can see I hope you can see it hope it looks great um, the stitching on this is just kind of a lot of really pretty um, loop de loo stuff going on there. So there's that one, very pretty. This next one, I actually picked out myself. Um, so this is a baby blanket. I do not currently have a baby. I hope to have a baby I in the future. Um, but I actually, we went to um, a fabric store together and I saw, uh, they call this a panel. Um, because it's not it's, it's one piece of fabric with the pattern on the fabric instead of um, like all the little pieces of fabrics sewn and quilted together this is more of a panel um, but I just thought it was so cute you've got these little trailers and it's summery and cute and dragonflies I really love dragonflies um, I just thought this was absolutely adorable you've got pinks and blue so it can be gender neutral work either way so she made this for me and um, the back I don't oh I forget the name of this fabric but it's like really soft it's really soft fabric and you can really see her backing stitching on this and it is a bunch of dragonflies kind of squirreling around so I will be keeping that isn't that pretty so that is the thing that people can go to her website and um, they can even ship their quilts to her um, their quilts that they've already made that they want like a nice pattern like this sewn on to the back and the front um, and her it's her machine that can do that and all kinds of really pretty patterns so I'll leave a link to my mom's uh, website below if you are also into quilting, if that's something that you uh, would like some help with. Um, this last one is my favorite though. So this is, I won't be able to show the whole thing because this is a rather large blanket. It's um, like the perfect size to lay around and snuggle up with. And it is so wintry and wonderful. Um, I love that it's wintry snowflakes and not just Christmassy, so I can still like enjoy it um, and have it around without explanation uh, for a few more months. Also, um, wintry makes me think of good things. Um, my birthday is this month in January, winter. Um, I don't think you can see on the camera, but some of the fabrics here are sparkly, so not just snow snowflakes but some sparkly snowflakes. And if you can also maybe tell, the, the stitching backing on this is snowflakes and swirls too. Okay, I see there's a snowflake there. Um, or maybe on the back, I bet you could probably see it better on the back. So it also has that really soft fabric on the back with all that beautiful, wonderful texture from her long arm machine so yeah it's been really nice okay well I think that is it for this week's podcast um don't forget to check out um the podcast by when um when Harry met Ani um I'm really looking forward to hearing her answer the 10 questions that I sent her. She's also doing an AMA, which is ask me anything. Um, and, uh, uh, 
yeah, if you like my podcast, you'll definitely like hers. So you'll really want to check hers out too. Thank you so much though for watching. If you made it this far, thank you so much. If you like what you see, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button um, and subscribe and you can see what I have to say just about every week. Um, I try my very best to post a video each Monday. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are all doing well. Um, comment below. Feel free to message me on Instagram also, at Adventures with Yarn. Um, I really would love to hear from you, hear your feedback, comments, and any, um, any crafts that you guys are working on. All right, well, that's it for now. I'll see you next time. Bye.